Hello, and welcome to this session of the Lloyd Instruments Training Program. The product I'm going to show you is a Davenport density column, and the unit I have here is a two-column device. A density column is used to measure the density of small solid samples using the flotation principle. The samples are usually either polymer chip or can be small pieces cut from a finished product. We know that a solid will float on a liquid that has a higher density than itself and will also sink in a fluid that has a lower density than itself. And we can show you that in this experiment. Here is a simple experiment to demonstrate the flotation principle. If I place a piece of polymer into alcohol, we can see it sinks straight to the bottom, so the density of the polymer must be greater than the alcohol, which is about 0.79. If I place the same type of polymer into water, we can see that it floats. Because it floats, it means that the density of the polymer must be less than the density of water, which is about 1. So we know that the density of that polymer is somewhere between 0.8 and 1. Now, if we were to make different liquids, for example, replace alcohol with alcohol and water mixture, giving a density of, say, 0.9, we could then determine whether the density of the polymer was greater or lower than 0.9. The complete Davenport density column system obviously contains two graduated tubes, or density columns, and these fit into the main assembly, which contains a water jacket. This water jacket is maintained at a constant 23 degrees centigrade, as stipulated by the standard. The reason that we have to maintain that temperature is because the density of the liquid will change with temperature. To make the liquid, we use this special double conical flask, which is going to fit on top of the assembly, a stirring mechanism for mixing the liquids together, a capillary tube for introducing the liquid gently into the tube, stopcock fittings, and a stirrer assembly. To introduce the floats into the column, we have a column sweeping mechanism complete with a basket and we will place the floats into the basket and this will be lowered very slowly into the column once the column has been made. I'm now going to show you how to assemble the unit. The first thing we need to do is to fill the water jacket to this fill level using distilled water. The level will in fact be much higher than this once we have the, the, the unit assembled, but we'll fill it to this mark as a starting point. The next thing we need to do is to introduce the tubes. So these will go in through the top. I don't have water in my jacket at the moment, but as we lower this down, of course, they're going to try and float. So we're going to have to push down to get the tube to go into the water and push down until it's in the holder at the base here. Now, because there's going to be an upthrust, if I release the tube, it will then lift out again. So we slide this holder over and that will prevent it from lifting. We'll do the same with the second tube. Again, we would have to apply pressure to overcome the buoyancy, locate it into the base, and secure with the holder. Now, we do supply a rod so that if you find it difficult or to, to hold that pressure against your hand as you push it in, what you can do is to use this rod and apply the pressure on the rod to locate the tube into the base. Again, secure it with the clip. Now we have the two tubes fitted into the assembly. We've got to fill the tubes with the required liquids. Now these liquids can be various combinations depending upon the density range that is required. 
The next thing we need to do is to introduce the liquids into the density column. We'll place the drip tray on the top of the unit. Then the stirrer assembly on top of the drip tray with these location studs upwards. We need to introduce the capillary tube into the tube. We have um, a cap with a hole, which we'll then place over the top of the tube, again secure it with a clip, and lower the capillary right into the bottom of the column tube. Now we need the conical flask and a magnet. What we're going to do here is we're going to introduce the two known liquids into the flask, the heavy one on the, the back of the unit and the lighter fluid near to the front, which has got the outlet. And it's going to be stirred in this flask. And to do that, we need a magnetic stirrer. So tilt the flask and just gently lower the stirrer into the base of the flask. Check that the tap is turned off and then we'll place this complete assembly on top of the stirrer mechanism. The last thing is the outlet tap to connect the flask to the capillary. We have two clips for this. Just place the flask, the, the uh, just place the tap on the front of the flask, clip it together, Position the assembly so that the outlet is just above the capillary and then connect together. Just check it's all in line. That is now ready for filling. Check this tap is turned off. Now that the unit is assembled, we need to build the column. Supposing I need a range of densities from 0.9 at the top to 0.95 at the base, what I will need is two liquids, one very slightly less than 0.9, for example 0.89, and the other one very slightly larger than 0.95, for example 0.96. I will mix up a litre of each of these liquids and then add 860 millilitres into the front flask and this one will be the low density in our case 0 0.89, and 860 millilitres of the heavy fluid, in this case 0 0.96, into the rear flask. You then open the tap between the two and allow the liquids to stabilise. Once you've allowed time for it to stabilise, we can then connect the stirrer to the mains block on the side, and the magnetic stirrer will start spinning inside this for, uh, front flask which contains the, the light fluid. We then open the outlet tap and what will happen is the fluid will then run very slowly down the capillary tube into the base of the density column. The very first amount of fluid coming through is going to be the very light, light density and as this comes out, some of the heavy fluid is going to go into the front flask to replace that that's gone into the tube. The result being that there's a mixing taking place and the density will increase very slightly. So the fluid is going to come down into the tube and all the time that the fluid is flowing, the density is gradually increasing. The heavy fluid is obviously going to stay at the bottom and what's going to happen is the lighter fluid is going to rise and rise and rise until when the column is full, we have the light, low density at the top and the high density at the base. When that happens and all the fluid has gone into the tube, we then disconnect the stirrer, disconnect the whole assembly, and the tube is made.
before we can use the assembly, or before we can use the density column, we have to allow time for this to stabilize, and then we add the floats to indicate the reference points. Now that the density column has been made, we need to introduce the floats so that we can get accurate reference points. To do that, we can remove the clip. The tube is not going to rise anymore because it is now full of fluid. Remove the cap and then fit the column sweeping mechanism onto the top of the unit. This mechanism is going to be used to lower the basket into the column and it moves at a very slow speed, taking about 40 minutes to reach the bottom. And by moving very slowly, it does not cause any disruption or change of the column. The basket assembly is here. As we can see, it's a, a very lightweight basket with a wire mesh on the base so that as it's lowered down, the turbulence is minimized. We place the cord around the mechanism and clip it onto the side of the winch. And then wind the cord around the winch so that the basket is lifted above the column. Like so. Right. We can swing the mechanism to one side and then take in the floats. Do not touch the floats by hand. Always use tweezers or cloth. Just gently place the floats into the basket and what we need to do then is to take a beaker usually of the lower value liquid in this case it'll be 0.89 and just raise the beaker up so the whole of the basket and the floats become immersed in the fluid then swing the mechanism back so that the basket is just inside the tube and then start the mechanism to do that, we connect it to the mains and then select the down position on the switch. What will happen now is the basket will lower very, very slowly down through the column and when the floats reach the liquid of their own density, they will just lift off the basket. So when the basket is at the base, you will have nine floats floating in the liquid. The mechanism will stop automatically when the, float is at, when the basket is at the bottom so we can leave that and come back later. The basket is now lowered completely to the base of the tube. The mechanism has automatically stopped. So all we need to do now is remove the clip and just lay the, the cord on the outside of the tube. We then put a, a, a full cap over the top just to prevent any evaporation of the tube and also to prevent dirt or other articles dropping into the tube. Disconnect the mechanism and then just store it. The density gradient tube is now ready for use. We leave the basket in the base and we'll use that to remove the floats and excess samples at a later date. To test the, po the density of the polymer, we just remove the cap carefully introduce the sample into the top, replace the cap. The sample will very slowly sink in the fluid until it reaches its own density when of course it will stop. The exact density is then calculated by the known densities of the floats above and below it. After many tests there will be lots of samples in here and it will be difficult to see which one you've just entered. When that happens, we need to clean the tube. To do that, we'll refit the column sweeping mechanism, attach the cord to the winch, set it into the up position, and 
the basket will be very slowly lifted up through the tube again. Now as it lifts up through the tube, it will catch each of the floats and also all of the samples so that at the end when the basket is at the top, again it takes about 40 minutes, we have all the floats and all the samples in the basket. We can then empty this out, clean it and then put them back in again. Typical life of a, a density gradient tube is about six weeks. And what will happen is the liquids will very slowly mix together, so the low density, which we said was 0.9, will gradually increase, say 0.91, and the higher density of 0.95 will gradually reduce to 0.94. So the two outer floats will start to reach the edges. When the floats reach the top or the bottom of the tube, then you have to replace the liquids. The water jacket has to be maintained at a constant 23 degrees centigrade, plus or minus 0.1 degrees, and the thermometer supplied has graduations of 0.1 degrees. The top of the thermometer has a step, and when it's lowered into the instrument, will sit in position. The thermal control consists of two parts, electrical heater controlled by this rheostat here, and water cooling through these tubes here. Now if the room temperature is well below 23 degrees, for example 19 degrees, it's likely that water cooling is not required. All we would do, uh, do is adjust this potentiometer here, allow time for the liquid to stabilise, and then we can measure the temperature. Each division on here is approximately 0.2 degrees centigrade. If the room temperature is close to or even above 23 degrees centigrade, then we need some kind of cooling effect. And what, we, what you need then is to connect mains water into the inlet tube and the outlet tube to a drain. Just a gentle flow of cooling water to help maintain the temperature. If the laboratory temperature is very much higher, then you'll need a chiller system. But that must be specified at the time of order because the mechanics inside here will be very slightly different.